Hello, and welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. I am your host, Jeffrey Card, and with me, for the first time, is Walter Williams. What's up? He is one of our uh, newly hired designers. Uh, you're kind of in the same position that I was in when the original State of Decay shipped, because I was hired like right at that moment. <laughs> and so, so I came into a brand new game that I, you know, that I just barely started playing, and now it was my job to sort of uh, help design some of the stuff that came afterwards. And so now you're doing the exact same thing here. <laughs> So, uh, do you want to give people just a, a quick, a quick rundown of like who you are, where where you come from, like like what what you're doing before this? Um, how far back? Oh, uh, whatever you want to tell, whatever is interesting, right? Because I know you were at you were at WB for a little while, right? Oh, the Monolith, yeah. Yeah, Monolith, doing uh, working on uh, some shadowy games over there. Yeah. And uh, cool. So, yeah, so you got a nice, uh, yeah, a nice, a nice pedigree. We're excited to have you here, especially <laughs> like he. Uh, during his interview, he just blew all of us away with some of the stories and stuff he was coming up with. So uh, I was really... very nervous. <laughs> Internally, you were nervous. Externally, it was just a rollicking good time. So <laughs> we're, we're really excited to have Walter on the team. Uh, for now, he's going to be the guy who's uh, playing the game for us, uh, kind of, uh, you know, keep keeping the keeping the the screen more interesting than our mugs. <laughs> and uh, while while we discuss stuff that's going on in the game, so if you want to if you want to unpause and get going, we can switch over. And there's a dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I got you in the middle of trouble. Our, our, our vehicle is destroyed. Uh, well, not destroyed, but it's it's pinned, so you can't move it anywhere. Uh, zombies are trying to kill you, and we're far from home. So screamer. enjoy. Oh, yeah. And there's a screamer, by the way. So uh, enjoy that situation. Um, if any folks have questions and stuff, we've got uh, we've got Wonder and Megan in the chat funneling questions to me. So if I miss it, if if I don't see it go by the first time, hopefully they'll get it to me via our uh, our internal Slack channel over here. In the meantime, uh, one thing that's really exciting right now is the fact that uh, the the one the 2.1 patch uh, was just released yesterday, uh, which means so so we release an update every time we we release DLC. So you know we just released the Independence Pack, and that came with a, with an update of its own for everybody. Even if you didn't buy the Independence Pack, you still got a bunch of gameplay tweaks and improvements and bug fixes and stuff like that. Uh, but there were a few things that we missed uh, <laughs> that we needed to go back and fix. So the 2.1 patch just came out, uh, and it's got. It's got a few big things that we want to make sure people are aware of. Uh, let me get my notes out here. Oh yeah, so um, in the chat, uh, Megan and Wonder uh, can post links to the patch notes so you guys can read them all in detail. Uh, but we wanted to talk about a couple of them. One of them, actually this is from the 2.0 update, from the one that came out uh, at the same time as, uh, as the Independence Pack. Uh, the Magnum Ammo Press now works. So originally, uh, the, we had we had like an ammo press for each of the different uh, uh, you know calibers of uh, kind of collections of calibers. We had the handgun calibers and the rifle calibers and the magnum calibers that were used by the revolvers and then the heavy ones, the 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 the, the five zero and the twenty millimeter grenades. And when uh, but unfortunately there was a bug where the ammo press that was supposed to make revolver ammo was making sniper rifle ammo instead. And so you had two different ammo presses that can make sniper rifle am ammo and nothing that can make revolver ammo. So that's fixed now. So now the Magnum ammo press makes the ammo it's supposed to make, the thing that it said in the description. And uh, so if you're into revolvers, if you, if you like guns that, uh, that don't jam and don't break, uh, then, those <laughs> then, then that's going to be a big help for you. Uh, Farshot wants to know about future DLC. Unfortunately, we can't really talk about it. I think that there's uh, there's been there's been a few descriptions here and there that have been posted about uh, the next uh, major DLC, uh, the the Daybreak Pack. I think you can look that up online. But uh, there's not a lot to reveal because we're still we're still heavily in development on it, and we don't want to we don't want to jump the gun and and, and, and tell you things uh, tell you things about it before we're absolutely sure what the final product looks like. Uh, da Ape uh, asks if we're going to keep doing things like the Independence Pack. Um, and I definitely, you know, we can't, it's one of those weird areas where it's like, you know, we can't really an give you a bunch of details on stuff that hasn't been announced yet. But, I mean, I personally, like, as, as a player of this game, I thought the, the Independence Pack was a big success. Was, you know, there's a lot of fun new things you can do with that thing. And, uh, wow. Like, for instance, if you're being chased by a horde up a rock pile, you can just set them all on fire. Uh, with a with a barrage from the uh, oh crap what was that one called it's not the starship the, the pyro launcher you can nail them all with a blast from the pyro launcher so uh, yeah so that's that's been a success so I think you know if that works I can imagine us doing something like that again in the future oh what's this guy gonna do he's just gonna stand there and freak out well, that's not a very effective zombie he just gave you a lead. 
things Th go down quickly. <laughs> Thank you, Smokey as Chief, for the for the nice comment on Mixer. Uh, oh, Simso asks uh, if we're going to ever add the option to remove leaders. Uh, that's an, that is another one that's high on our radar. Uh, you know, it takes it takes time to work through um, feature requests like that, but that's that's definitely one that we we definitely understand the reason why people want that, and that's I think that's gets kind of high on our list. Um, can't tell you anything about exactly when something like that might come out, or or even if it will, but it's one that we definitely appreciate and, and understand the, the desire for. Oh, so here's a question from Alfred Ben, uh, and this is actually another thing I was going to talk about. He's asking, uh, does the has the gunslinging skill been fixed? So that's a funny story. Uh, the, the quick answer is yes, the gunslinging skill has been fixed. Uh, but this is actually an interesting one because it's uh, I was I was intimately involved in the process of of, um, of creating and um, and discovering that bug, uh, and it, I don't know. I thought you might you guys might be interested, kind of in, in the story of how things like this actually work. So um, while we're working on uh, on the Daybreak uh, DLC, uh, we wanted to make some changes to the way that skills worked to make it easier for us to do things like if we needed to, for instance, make a new skill. You know, it used to be really difficult to make a new skill because you know there would be some parts of the skills effects you'd make on the skill itself, but then there would be other um, like powers that a skill would give you that the skill itself doesn't know anything about. Instead, like some other part of the game would check the skill from far away, see if you had the skill, and then give you the power. And so the way that skills worked was just scattered all over the code. And so we wanted to be able to add new skills to the game, and, and to do that, effectively, we wanted to sort of consolidate them and, and change the way that they work so that everything that a skill does is contained in the data that defines a skill. So we did that. That meant redoing a bunch of stuff, taking you know things that worked and making them work again. And we did that like every, almost every single power, uh, like interesting special power that a skill gives you, went through this process of of, of basically being recreated, set up a, set up again in a new way. And we tested every single one of them. We're like, okay, this one we we broke it, but then we fixed it again. We broke it, then we fixed it again. We had all of the skills working. But there was one little problem, which was um, the the aim snap ability on gunslinging. Uh, when I was assigning the uh, the uh, uh, the basically the, the power to the skill, there were two little fields right next to each other. One of them was uh, this skill has this power all the time. If you've got this skill, you've got this power, no matter what. And the and the blank right next to it is you have this power at zero stars, and that's the only time you have the power. And so I put it in the wrong slot and tested it. You know, we opened up the game and we and we I cheated somebody to have the gunslinging skill, tried it out, and yeah, I gave them the gunslinging skill and they had aim snap. So yes, I did not break it. Sweet. And so <laughs> checked it in and actually went on vacation. Um, <laughs> and so uh, while I was out, uh, you know, the the the, the 2.0 patch goes live. And suddenly people are noticing that if they have two or three or five or seven stars in gunslinging, they don't have aim snap anymore. And it was so embarrassing because like when something like that happens and at least you're there in the office to fix your own mistake, uh, that you know, you're like you're embarrassed, but you're like, okay, but I'm on it, you know, and, and, and you're solving it. But instead, Brian and Matthew had to pour through all of my stuff and figure out where I had broken uh, the skill, and they had to fix it themselves while I was gone. So I was humiliated uh, when I came back and I realized that that was a problem. Um, but I luckily, you know, because we have such an active community uh, and folks were able to contact me directly, I was actually able to personally apologize to some of the fans uh, that were affected by this. And now the, the, the fix is out. So now the gunslinging skill should work exactly the way it was intended. Uh, and I'm so sorry for that about, you know, week or so of time where it was busted and you know but but that's kind of the way game development works right it's like you have to think of so many things when you're testing something you can't just test it you have to test it in context you have to test weird things you didn't think should have been affected but maybe were and it's easy to just forget to do the one thing that will reveal a, a critical bug to you uh and you know so there you go yeah a blade of meat shield yeah i had to wear the cone of shame uh for a little while <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was pretty bad. But, um, but you know, that's but everybody does that, and that's that's one thing too. That I mean, people weren't actually like I was embarrassed, but people weren't actually like angry at me because everyone has done that. You know, everybody has checked in something to to the game where they thought they had tested it thoroughly, and it turns out they forgot one test that would have revealed a bug. It's a rite of passage. It's kind of yeah, it's, it's a rite of passage. It's like you're not really a game developer until you've ruined something yeah. publicly. Uh, so. 
So that was a lot of fun. Uh, but that's been fixed, and so gunslinging works now the way it's supposed to. Um, other stuff that's fixed, um, people have been complaining for a long time that the close combat skill uh, was not reliably leveling up. Uh, that, that, you know, you would get the close combat skill and you would go around with just a knife stabbing people and the skill would just never rise and never rise and never rise. And if you had a, um, uh, like with the fighting gym, you know, you could train the skill up that way, but you couldn't actually get it in the field. So that's been fixed now too. So if you, if you want to be a close combat specialist, uh, that'll work. And let's see. I've oh, got a bunch of other questions that Megan's forwarding me here. So, uh, California Dan wants to know if we're going to be adding barricades to windows like in the first game. Uh, that was one that we, we thought about a lot um, early in development, but it was one of those cases where like, you, when, you're, when you're sort of triaging new features and you're deciding whether or not to put a feature in the game, a lot of times it comes down to bang for buck. How much work would it be to create the feature and how much would it actually change the game experience for the player? And that was one where as much as like... like Viscerally, we love the idea of barricading windows because it's such a key part of like zombie That's cinema, cool, right? Yeah. It's like that, that that image of like banging up, you know, like obstacles in the windows, and you see hands starting to reach through. Yeah. It's such a huge part of the of this, of like zombie cinema and stuff that you want to have it for just the vibe it gives the game. But in the end, you know, it didn't actually change the way you play the game that much. You know, like you're you're still even in the original game, you were never really safe when you barricaded a window. Uh, it would just sort of delay the zombies a little bit, but eventually they would always get in. And uh, you know, when we were had you know, limited time and limited resources, we realized this this job, which would basically it would it was going to take Brant months and months and months to make all of the windows in the game mm. barricadable, because mm. uh, there's like you know there's there's. There were quick ways to do it, there were cheap ways to do it, there were good-looking ways to do it, and but most all of the ways to do it involved Brant doing something horrific for <laughs> for months and months. And so we decided to spare him that. Um, and instead and instead, you know, let him spend more time making guns for the game, you know, props for the game, um, and and expand that rather than spending all those resources on barricades, which in the end we're not we're not going to to make that huge of a difference to the to the gameplay. That said, though, if you know, uh, as as we're you know developing game in the future, uh, or, or even future games in the franchise, uh, you know, who knows where that leads us? If we come up with the right role for that to play, uh, you know, there's there's no reason why you know we're why we're not like morally opposed to having barricadable windows. It just has to be you know the right feature with the right benefits and the right cost. So that's kind of how that works. Um, let's see here. Oh, jeez. Um. So Garlic Burp wonders if we're ever going to change the population cap so we're not stuck with, uh, with just t 10 people. Uh, that was one where it wasn't just about resources, though, I mean, certainly, the, the more people, like right now, you can't actually have your entire community milling around your base all at once. Uh, you've, got, you've got more people um, in your community than, uh, you, when you're at max, than the game can actually handle. Uh, you know, rendering and, and keeping track of their AI uh, all at the same time. Um, and so if we raise the population cap, that would start to become really, really obvious. If you have, you know, 40 people living in your community, but you only ever see six or seven at a time, you'd start to really notice. Uh, so at, at 10 or 11, it's not that bad. Uh, but, but when you start getting higher than that, it starts to get kind of weird. Uh, and so that, so it's partly a resource thing, but it's also just the fact we really don't, we didn't want this to be the kind of game where like, say, say Frostpunk, for instance, is one of my favorite games of this year. Um, and all of the characters, like it's about running a city, right? A, an apocalyptic city, and there's hundreds of people in your community. And all of them have names, all of them have jobs. Like if you click on any one of them, you can see who they are. But you don't actually care. They're just numbers to you. And, and that's fine, because that's, you know, that's the kind of game it is. It's a large-scale community management simulator. And it's supposed to be that way. They're not expecting you to, to really get deeply involved with any one character. But in our game, it, our game is structured very differently. We really actually do want you to be, um, to be deeply involved emotionally with some of your characters. We really want you to care about them as individuals. Uh, kind of the way, you know, another game by the makers of Rockspunk, uh, This War of Mine, would let you have communities of maybe four or five people max, but you really were aware of wh who each character was, what they had done in the story, and, you know, and what, what, what their skills were, what their advantages and disadvantages were. You got, really got to know them. And, and so we wanted our game to be closer to that end of the spectrum, not all the way down to like three or four people, but, but we wanted our game to be in that zone where you get to know the characters and, and they're important to you. And so the, the numbers really are important to that. You know, if you've got 30 people to keep track of, you can't possibly know them all uh, you know, to, to that level of detail, the way you can if you've only got six or seven. 
And so, so we made a conscious design choice to have this be a game that's about small communities, specifically, so that you could get to know the characters rather than just thinking of, of them as a resource. I'm giving very long answers to these questions, and I probably, I'm probably losing track of a lot of stuff. How dare you give detailed information? <laughs> How dare you, sir? So, uh, so where are we headed right now? What are you doing? Um, one dude at Blood Plague, so I was like, I'm going to get some meds on that. Uh, this dude is jumping over the fence and the problems. I just want to... <laughs> Actually, I'm just trying to live. Actually, if one guy's got blood plague, um, whether you get the meds or not, when we get back, we should try to euthanize him, because there's another there's another thing in the in, in the recent patch, and and I think this one was in 2.0, uh, that we actually get a um, uh, confirmation dialogue when you're going to euthanize someone. So you can't accidentally just hit the wrong hit the wrong option and just instantly kill someone without a chance to back out of it. So we're going to put that to the test uh, right, if we well, get the chance. If we get the I, chance. I can go right back. I just... Oh, I mean, go ahead and look for some... I mean, we're going to need meds eventually anyway, but go ahead and do what you're doing. But... Me two, days, two meds a day. Oh, yeah. No, that's totally not worth it. I want to eat some ammo. <laughs> ammo seems a bit scarce. Yeah, so whenever you get back to the base, let's, let's try that out and see if it's true. Because I read it in the patch notes, I haven't personally tried it myself, so maybe we'll find out <laughs> that it's not there. So let the let the uh, anticipation uh, build. Let's see here. I might die first. Oh, uh, so L W Y not. Uh, I'm probably saying your name totally wrong. Uh, it says I'm trying to get my wife to let me kill all these damn plague hearts, but she's worried there'll be way more juggernauts and ferals because of that, and they want to know is that true? Uh, so I know that like uh, last week Brian uh, specifically was trying to avoid explaining how um, our um, what we're we talking about our, our uh, difficulty uh, how our difficulty system works like because because the game does get harder over time but he didn't want to necessarily just make it like too obvious and exploitable yes, by I explaining what, exactly use. what happens uh, so I'm not going to give you a ton of details on that but um, one thing I can't tell you is like it's not it it isn't just about how many plague hearts you've killed. So, you know, if you've killed one Plague Heart versus killing seven Plague Hearts, that by itself is not going to suddenly jump the difficulty up. So go ahead and kill as many Plague Hearts as you want, as fast as you want. Um, I, I don't think that's going to be the linchpin in, uh, in your experience. Um, there are definitely things that will raise the difficulty over time that tend to trend up over time, but, but that, I don't think that one is, is specifically the linchpin. Um... Uh, Full Fury asked, did we add a, uh, a Where's Waldo zombie to the game? Because they think they, that they found him. Uh, I'm not sure. I hadn't heard about that, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's an Easter egg in there of a Where's Waldo. You can Waldo. either confirm or deny. Something. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, you know, those kinds of Easter eggs, you know, it only takes um, one team member to put an, an Easter egg in like that. So we're not all going to know about them. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if uh, if the character team put in a, a Where's Waldo zombie. That would be hilarious. I know, we know that there's a there's a Plants vs. Zombies Conehead zombie uh, in the game. That one sh has showed up pretty regularly, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's see here. So we're going to head back in Cypress Hill, huh? Uh, yeah. And go see, let's go see if we can if we can murder this guy. Uh, we, we can definitely murder him no matter what, but uh, the question is whether we get a second chance when we accidentally murder him. And speaking of murder, it's a nice move there. <laughs> so, El Capitan Assassin asks, would it be feasible for the passenger van to provide plus two beds when parked in your base parking spots? <laughs> That's a pretty clever idea. I think that, that would require... Our, our data is not set up that way for vehicles to provide benefits when they're parked in parking spots. Um, that's just, it's, just, it's fundamentally not a thing that we could do easily. We'd have to add an entire new feature to support it. But I love that idea. I think that's awesome. And uh, when we're, you know, when we're looking back at, you know, at, at maybe, uh, you know, future iterations of the game, I, that, I hope I hope I remember that idea because that, that's that's a, a, a really good one. The idea that just what you park, like we got those empty parking slots. They are facilities. Yep. If we could key stuff off what, what's parked there, that actually could be kind of cool. That would be dope. It seems kind of exploitable, potentially, though. Somebody just collecting a million vans in their parking lot. Well, you can always balance it in other ways, right? Like, they are outside of the defenses. Oh, that's true. Like, maybe maybe if, if we, you know, if we were to do a version of the game where we add that, maybe also we have zombies destroying things that, that are left outside your base. And so it's a risky way to, to handle things or something like that. I have found the person in question. Okay, let's see, let's see how this works. So, aid blood blade victim... Yo, Y button, and then you? try to euthanize them. Let's see what happens. Whoa! Look at that. We get we get a confirmation dialogue, so you don't have to kill him if you don't want to. So uh, I don't know. So what do you want to do? 
We could totally kill him right now. He's he's costing meds and we haven't found any. He is costing any. meds and there's no food. In he meds. also did just get up though. Well, he's he's in a cycle, right? Yeah, I guess so. Let's see what happens if we do this. No more pain. Where's all this gear going? Can rest now. Thanks. Oh, are we are we about to find another bug? Sucks anyway. Oh no, here we go. Oh man. That was raw. Oh, that was harsh. That was that was straight raw. Hayden, man, you're oh. Man, where's the love? Oh, hey, we got some stuff off him, at least. Oh, That's man, it. he had a car beat. <laughs> we haven't forgotten. You can grab that stuff. Okay, so, hey, that's another thing that, uh, that we got in the patch, so that's pretty cool. We're gonna get a siege. Switch to that. Let's see how silence Uh, so Jacob Sparks wants to know if we're, uh, if we're planning to change zombie spawning um, as uh, far in, uh, like in, in rural areas or forests or the big lake on Meager Valley. Uh, I don't know what change you're talking about. Uh, are you saying that we should maybe try to thin out the zombie spawning in rural areas? Or are you hoping to run into more zombies there? Uh, or, or is there something else about their spawning you had a concern about? I'd love to, to, to drill down a little bit more on what you mean by that question, Jacob. Um, Will there be a way to get vehicles out of ditches or unstuck? Uh, so we started this uh, this stream with, uh, we, were, we started out right next to the meat wagon, which uh, last week Brian uh, and I managed to get like pinned on a, on, a, on a headstone and we couldn't move it. And at first I was like, oh man, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't need vehicles to get unstuck, it's fine. But the more I tried to get that meat wagon off, the more <laughs> I can understand where people are coming from when they want to have an unstuck option for vehicles. Um, I, I think that's, that is a particularly hard problem to solve, figuring out where you can put a vehicle that you're teleporting away from, from a stuck location. So it's, it's not, I don't think that's an easy problem to solve, and it might not be something we can, we can, we can ever do. But I definitely understand why people would want it. Uh, so it's, it's, it's something we've noticed. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Al Alfred Van wonders if, if uh, we're planning on making more missions that are that are kind of as as, as involved and intense as, as the legacy ones. Things like, uh, you know, the the like fighting off invaders, like uh, in the sheriff's quest. Uh, he's asking whether we'll have more missions like that that don't actually complete the game. Because he's he's like, I love that mission, but it ends the game when I play it, so I don't want to play it a lot. Um, that's that, that's really good feedback. Uh, we you know we don't have any specific plans to do like exactly that thing, but uh, you know, and, and that's going to be true of almost anything that, that you guys suggest. It's like a lot of the times we, we don't have a very specific plan to address the thing you're bringing up, but that's really good feedback, uh, and I'll, I'll I'll pass it along to the mission team because uh, you know. The, Partly just the fact that you really enjoyed that particular mission would be something they'll want to hear, and then you know the idea that you that you'd like to see more of it in different contexts. Um, yeah, that's that's really good for them to know. So I'll, I'll pass it along. Uh, Rob Jalo wants to know if we're planning on doing holiday-themed events like like the Independence Pack. Uh, you know, it really it, it brought in these uh, these uh, Revolutionary War reenactment zombies and all these Fourth uh, of July themed. Uh, you know. Uh, tools and weapons and, and, and vehicles. Are we planning on doing that again? Uh, no, we can't ever announce, you know, specific plans for stuff, you know, that we haven't, we haven't gotten to yet. But uh, that is definitely something that's in our heads. I mean, the reason we did the Independence Pack was because we knew we were going to be release, releasing close to summer, and we wanted to sort of take advantage of, you know, the excitement around events like, you know, the 4th of July in the United States. And so that's definitely been in our minds. So we'll, we'll see what we actually end up doing, but, uh, but yeah, no, that's... That's been a lot of, I mean, it's been a lot of fun to do this, you know, and I'm sure people have a lot of ideas in the, in the back of their heads for, you know, what what State of Decay would be like at Christmas or Halloween or Valentine's Day. I know we did we did once. Uh, there, there, we, I, I we really did want a, Arbor Day. I'm, so I'm looking forward to Arbor Day. We did a Valentine's Day um, challenge in the Year One Survival Edition where uh, the, the, the prize for completing the challenge was a pink gun covered in hearts. That's that that Brant, Brant Brant nearly nearly died making that because <laughs> he d he nearly just suffered a nervous he breakdown like having to make a gun. Power. It was it just it just wasn't his style. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, no, that that was a lot of fun. Groundhog's Day, it's the same day over and over again. <laughs> oh, uh, a far, far shot five thirteen uh, suggested tow truck DLC for getting vehicles uh, detached. That that's a good idea. The, the idea of using physics instead of teleportation would be a different solve for the problem. You know, attaching to a vehicle and pulling it off. It's still very complicated, though. So uh, so we'll, we'll have to see what we can actually do. Um, Behendig wants to know if we're getting inventory sorting. 
Um, certainly, uh, I, that that is something that I don't, I don't know if we've announced a particular like time or context in which we would be offering that, but it's definitely something people are looking into here. I've, I've been involved in multiple discussions about exactly you know exactly how to solve the problem. In fact, basically, when people have been playing the game for a while, they've built up a lot of stuff in their in their supply locker. It's very easy to just sort of get lost in a sea of items and and, and, and you know have trouble finding the one that you want to pin. And so having some way to sort it so you know where to expect things to be will be very helpful, uh, particularly in some of the more uh, kind of jumbled and confusing uh, parts of the inventory, like, like the uh, the ammo and weapons uh, slot is one in particular where people are like, you know, I've got, I've got to find a gun that uses the right ammunition, but they're all scattered all over the place, and i got to drill down into each gun to see what kind of bullets it fires, uh, and, and that could be a challenge. And so we're, you know, we're, we're looking into solutions for that. Is it throwing something on its way. What is it? The what you got? School bell. You know what? I don't. I'm not sure about the school bell. Well, we want to find out. Yeah. Fire in the hole. Yes, it is a throwing weapon. Good. That was just an explosion. I think that's. Uh, I'm not sure what. Look, look at it in your inventory. Let's see. Let's see the description of that one. I don't. I don't know that uh, that icon very well. It's probably something from the. You know what that probably is? That's probably the uh, the new firework that. Uh, like that just does a single really loud explosion. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the XL oh, okay. firework shell. Yeah, that's the one that does the, uh, the 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 single huge explosion. It just attracts their attention for a second, but it attracts every zombie's attention. It's made for mostly for escapes. Dude, that dude is raging. He is mad at that rock. Yeah. You freaking rock! <laughs> Ugh. I fell off this rock and the zombies got me. Now I'm just mad at this rock for the rest of my life. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, so so Jacob wanted to know about le whether we can have less zombies in the rural areas uh, as opposed to towns. Um, so right now, like the, the, the priority of the game is to try to just make sure there's interesting zombie encounters around you most of the time, so that you know we uh, if if you got if you got into places where there just simply were not and uh, not very many zombies around and, and there wasn't anything to fight, I think that that you know it would it would start to get a little bit dull and feel maybe a little bit easy. Uh, and so, so that was kind of what we what we sort of tuned the game towards is just making sure that the game could put zombies around you, whenever it needed to, all the time. Uh, and these, you know, and so that that's that's what we sort of prioritize for. We don't have a huge uh, a huge ability right now to just say, you know, in in this area there's there's almost no zombies. In this area there's tons of zombies. Uh, that's that's a little bit harder, uh, but. Uh, but yeah, so, so we don't have any specific plans for that. But if we, I mean, if we start hearing a lot of people say that that's something that, that would really improve the experience for them, to see is running into less zombies in rural areas. The problem is we're actually getting a lot of feedback the other way that people who've been playing the game for a long time worry that there's not enough zombies and they and they, and they, they feel like they wanted to run into more conflict and more danger and, and get into more trouble. Um, and so and so it's interesting. It's an interesting field to navigate, right? When you've got some people who are like, you know, I really want to run into like less zombies here, and other people say, I really want to run into more zombies all the time. What do you do to the game to make everybody happy? Uh, it's it's hard because, you know, it's not like we, you know, we, we want to make everyone happy. You know, a lot of people have spent money on this game this and we really, we feel a, like a, a, a duty to, to go out there and, and try to make the experience as good for everyone as possible. And so that's that's always an interesting challenge. You know, maybe maybe we'll find a solution to that at some point um, in, in the future. But uh, if we have specific ideas for that, I can't share them yet. So let's see here. So other other stuff that happened uh, from the stream, I mean from the stream from the from the patch. We're on the stream. This is not what I'm talking about. Uh, oh, you can actually if you find a rucksack like that one. Like that one. If you had if you had a if you had a follower with you, you could actually walk up and talk to your follower and hand them the rucksack, <laughs> which is a which Take is because I used to, I used to do this all the time. Right? I would you just switch. I would switch characters yeah. and let them pick up the rucksack and switch back, and that was you know fun and all. But like if I had a personal mission I was in the middle of. It would lose my personal right. You so, fail, yeah, it, like you're kicking yourself out of this. Yeah, it's, and so it always just I'd feel like this great aversion to doing that. So now you can just you don't have to switch to them. You can just hand them the rucksack yeah, and they get it. So the that's in the dialogue when you talk to, to to your follower. You get the option if you're holding a rucksack to just pass the rucksack over. Um, what else do you have? Oh, another one just. People posted. I, I really loved watching this. People posted a lot of bugs about the community screen. Uh, like, the, basically, we uh, the characters kind of came unmoored from their usual standing positions. And when you recruited new characters or made a new leader, there's there's a few things you could do. 
that would cause the characters to shift around and show up in weird places they weren't supposed to be. And so there were some characters that were like on top of each other, and because of their animations, it looked like they were hugging or cuddling each other. Hey man, and this is zombie apocalypse. It was that like, yeah. Needs a hug. You need like the warmth of human companionship. Yeah. Uh, and so, so that was actually a lot of fun seeing those those posted. But that has been fixed, and so there are people are standing with you know, um, with like you know, room for the Holy Ghost between them, all of them, and uh, it's, it's just no no touching, no we touching put, at all. Someone in with a ruler. <laughs> Whenever you're not on the here. screen, this person with a ruler comes in and it's like separates them all. It's like Ur. yeah. So that's nice. Oh, and another big one, um, the uh, the radio missions. So so you know we've got these missions on the radio that you can that you can trigger. That basically like if you're all at a food and you don't know where to search for food, the, there's a you know there's a, a radio option that you can use to trigger a food mission to go send you out to find food and reliably find whoa and reliably find a rucksack somewhere that's got food uh, if there's any left in your map at all. But uh, some one of our recent changes and I'm not actually sure which one broke that. So basically. Any time a mission sent you after uh, sent you after a rucksack, there's a good chance that uh, that the rucksack would not appear in any of the uh, in any of the containers, and and so the mission could never be completed. You wouldn't find a thing you were going after. Uh, it, it didn't just break those radio options. It actually it actually broke several of, of the story missions. Um, but uh, we got that fixed. And so now, hopefully, if you're if you're running low on a resource and you want to rely on your radio to find it. Uh, nice shot, by the way. Thank you. Uh, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to do that. It'll it'll work again. So if you if you ran into that problem that it wasn't working for you, try it again. It should it should work now. And those are a lot of the major things that uh, that popped out of the patch notes. I mean, there's you can go back. You know, uh, Wonder and Megan posted uh, links to the patch notes if you guys want to check those out. Uh, those are uh, you know you can see all the details and, and see all the other things that have been going on. Oh, uh, Ch Chill Shelf said that he, that he actually uh, has run into. Uh, he says he's run into uh, to people who have modded their game. Who, when he joined them in multiplayer, uh, they actually did damage to his save, and that's that's not something that we typically think should be possible. So if that's happening, we definitely, we're glad you told us about it. We're going to look into figuring out what's going on there. That's something we should, that, that should not be possible. Even if somebody has got a modding, like, in general, we wanted to support modders. We wanted, you know, uh, even though we don't ship, like, you know, specific mod tools or anything with the game, we know this is, our game is made in a familiar engine that a lot of people know how to mod with. And, uh, and so we wanted people to be able to mod. We wanted friends to be able to get together and, you know, play the game and alter the game however they wanted to, to, to you know, to play it their way. Uh, and so we don't, we didn't put in anything trying to stop people from modding the game. But we did try to make it so that clients, you know, so that the hosts had very limited ability to, to mess with clients and do any kind of long-term damage to them. So if that's possible, uh, th thank you for telling us, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to find out what's, what's going on there and make sure that that's, that that's not something people can easily do. That's kind of messed up. So, uh, so yeah, so, um... What Wonder's asking, yeah, so definitely, let's try to get some more information from, from Chill Shelf on exactly what happened. Uh, and and so, yeah, so, so Wonder and Megan will, will, will try to figure that out, and we'll, we'll report that to some folks over here and try to figure out what, what might have happened and if there's anything we can do to prevent that, because that's, that's not the experience we're, we're hoping people to have. Uh, Told you I'd deliver the goods. Uh, Leon Anagers, uh, 1983. Uh, asks, why not make difficulty setting? Uh, so initially, uh, the, the, the reason there's no difficulty settings in the game right now is just because we, we were kind of starting from the simplest shared experience for everybody. You know, we, we basically, we tried to come up with the version of the game that we thought that most audience members, when they, when they first got the game, that, that it was going to make them happy. And we devoted all of our time to trying to make that one difficulty level work. Uh, to, to, you know, make, to, to tuning it so that people would, you know, feel like they were getting a good progression out of, you know, out of, as they were collecting resources and building things and, and building up their, their skills and then facing more and more difficult hey, zombie you. encounters, Follow that me. that, that curve of do. difficulty would feel After right. Um, and that takes a lot of effort by itself. Um, and, and we really wanted to make sure we spent our time, so we spent our time nailing that experience. And so that's what we did. And so we, so we shipped with one difficulty level and we tried to get that, that difficulty curve as satisfying as we could for the broadest segment of the audience that we could. But at the same time, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we're really aware of the fact that there's people who want a lot of different things out of this game. Some people want a much harder challenge out of this game than we, than we provided out of the gate. And there's other folks who actually want it to be a little easier. 
Um, and so we've, we've taken that very seriously. You know, one of the very first DLCs uh, or like you know additions or whatever that we made to the the original game was Breakdown, which was all about you know it was a, it was a DLC that was all about it enhancing the difficulty and, and changing the difficulty of the game over time as, as, as you achieve things. Um, and so we realize that that's actually one of the most important things that people want out of our game. Uh, and so we, we've definitely got that in mind. That's been on our radar from the very beginning that, you know, we were going to ship with one difficulty, but at, at some point people were going to want us to do more. So we've got that in our, in our minds and, and uh, we're, I'm looking forward to when we can, you know, maybe talk about some of the possibilities in more detail later on. Rob JLo, I'm not actually sure. Uh, so Rob JLo asks, uh, when will the Independence Day theme end? Uh, that's actually a piece of information that I did not come in here armed with. So, mo so the Independence Pack, of course, is all. Once you've bought it, it's always available. You can always get those weapons. You can always get that vehicle, even if it's you know the middle of December, whatever. You can have all that stuff for as long as you want. It's yours. Uh, but there's things like the uh, the Revolutionary War zombies that that everybody got that feel very Fourth of July themed. Um, and the question of how long those guys will last, I'm not actually sure what the answer to that question is. Um, so, because I think at some point they might disappear, uh, but but it's only a small part of the game uh, that that has the uh, the chance of of, of disappearing um, over time. But I, I genuinely don't know the answer to that. So um, I can try to find out, and you know maybe we can, um, you know, give you the answer in in some other context. Fucking C's will be here soon. Let's see here. OGD uh, has a good uh, suggestion for a feature that uh, that you know maybe is asking if, if there's if there's a way that we could let you choose a follower or or, or in, in in some way pinpoint a character uh, from your community that you want um, from from a list rather than trying to go and find them out in the world because a lot of times you know if they, if you want to if you want to summon a follower uh, or, or you know bring a follower along with you you have to go and if you want a specific one you got to run around your base and and look at every single like diamond on your map until you find the person. Um, and that can that can be challenging and time consuming. I've had the same experience myself. Uh, so that's it, it's good to call that out. I, I, the, uh, we've got we, we've got a list of characters, right? We've got the community screen. So um, that's a, that's a really good suggestion uh, that that we'll have to we'll have to bear in mind. Making forty five. I hope I hope Wonder is taking notes of these things that I've said I'll look into because I'm going to forget all of them <laughs> as soon as as soon as this is done. Well, you make fifty rounds. That's excellent. Oh yeah. Oh, oh you make fifty rounds of what? 50. He was out of he was out of forty five, so I needed to go oh. to the press and get some of that sweet, sweet bullet here? time action. Yeah, and for those of you who missed uh, the thing we said early on, um, uh, one of the thi one of the things that, that changed in, in one of the more recent patches was the Magnum ammo, ammo press, which used to not make the three fifty seven and forty four ammo that it was supposed to make. What Instead, it would make it would make five zero and uh, twenty millimeter. Now it works. So now the Magnum ammo press makes. 357 and 44 rounds, and so if you if you've been carrying those revolvers around that, that use 357 or 44, uh, then that Magnum ammo press actually does what you want it to now, instead of what it used to do, which was make you know sniper rifle ammo basically. So much ammo. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll uh yeah. So let me I just gotta answer some things here. So. Um, <laughs> Like yeah. So yeah. Uh, wonder. I was. I was just suggesting that uh, I keep saying. I've said about three or four times now on the stream that uh, that like. Oh yeah. I'll look into that. Thank you. Um, and I was just. And I. So I was just saying offhand. Uh, you know. I hope you're taking notes, Wonder, because I'm not taking notes on what I've said. I'm going to look into. Uh, I might have to. You know. And, and Wonder's like she's very busy right now, and so she's. Uh, you know. She she has not been taking notes. But that's totally fine. Uh, that wasn't one of the parameters of the job here that we uh, that we laid out. But um, I'll probably just rewatch the stream and. And try to keep track of all the things that I said so that we can look into this stuff. Because, yeah, I don't want to don't want to leave anybody hanging. <laughs> all right, so. Oh, Bilbo asks, any good tips on finding an ammo press? Uh, that, that's a good question for Brian. He's kind of the guy uh, who, who knows where, not only just knows everything about the, the facility mods, but also where you get loot. Um, I think t typically, though, I mean, if you look in places, uh, you know what? I've got ideas for what I'm going to say. They could all be wrong. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't try to give you any answers unless we got Brian around. Back off, back off. Let's see. 
guys are falling. Oh, yeah. Uh, Full Fury is asking if, if we're going to get a uh, performance mode. That is something that we that we've talked about, but I don't uh, I don't have a solid answer for you on that. Sorry about that, but. Uh, I know that a lot of people have asked about the question of, of you know, whether we can, uh, on the Xbox One X, you know, decide how to use the extra power, give you options, let you decide, you know, what, what, what the extra power of the console is, is going to be used for. If it's going to be used for, you know, um, higher resolution, greater performance, uh, that sort of thing. Are you trying to kill me? So uh, I, don't, I don't have a solid answer for you on that, but, but you are not the only one who's brought it up, and it's, it's definitely something that's been discussed around here. Uh, Legendary Toxin wants to know if we can ban people on State of Decay 2. Um, so we, if you are hosting a game and somebody comes in that you don't like, you definitely have the ability to kick them. I think it's on, on the pause menu. Uh, you have the ability to kick players uh, from, from, your, uh, from your game. Uh, as far as banning people from the game overall, uh, because, because the game is peer-to-peer is -peer and it's not server-hosted, we are not actually... Uh, at, a, at a high level, you know, managing who's in the game and what they're doing, and so we, we're not. I don't think we're in a position to just to just target and ban specific people uh, from the game. You know, if they if they if they own it, they do, they do have the ability to play it. Um, but you do you also if, if there's if you find that there are exploitative jerks or you know other kinds of people that are that are making your play, play experience not fun, um, you can you know you can switch your multiplayer options to be friends only um, and avoid using the, the the public features if that's you know like like, like the flare multiplayer. If, uh, if if that's you know if that's something you want to avoid altogether. What's happening? You're the boss. Uh, X Blue Five 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 asks if we're gonna, if we're planning on making it so that you can add scopes to guns. Uh, so right so right now the basically all the attachments for weapons are muzzle attachments, and we've got some we got a lot of guns that actually come with um, scopes that are attached to them already, um, and so. It, it, and those are both those two systems. A system that lets us, you know, just um, at will, you know, add and, and remove uh, 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 suppressors uh, and, and chokes and, and muzzle brakes uh, to guns. That's using the same system as as the system that has, you know, uh, some weapons come with built-in scopes and sights of different kinds. Uh, so it's not it's not inconceivable, but uh, it would it would add some complexity because we we would have to you know put in um, some you know like UI for managing the difference between like what. Kinds of attachment a particular uh, a particular gun can uh, can attach, you know, and, and like for instance, if, if a gun has room for both a suppressor and a scope, do we need to you know show two slots for that? And then the what button do we use for removing which one of them? You know, it, it starts to get complicated. We kind of we kind of targeted the specific single kind of attachment uh, that we thought would be the most useful to players, so that we could keep the UI for that that whole experience. Uh, very uh, the UX for that experience very simple, um, so that so we wouldn't you wouldn't you know need to go through a complicated process of adding and removing a bunch of different mods from a guns from a gun. You could be always very confident that you know there's one thing that I could attach or detach from this gun, and I know how to do it, um, and, and and the buttons are all very clear. So so we're probably going to keep it simple. But it's not inconceivable that you know be, because you know the system does kind of uh, technically support it on some level. So. I'm not. I'm not going to say like a super, super hard no, but there's definitely uh, there's definitely trade-offs. Uh, so Mushin has got a question that yeah, that, that you're correct. I probably can't answer it, uh, but uh, they're asking, uh, can we migrate our community to the upcoming Daybreak uh, expansion pack? And I can't answer it, but it's also. I think once you get there, you'll 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 see that. Um, I don't think you would want to, <laughs> and I'll just leave it at that. Um, I think that if you have if you have characters that you love that you've put a lot of time and effort into, um, I don't think you want to bring them to daybreak. So I'll just I'll just leave that there, and uh, and you can draw whatever conclusions you want to from that. Got C's up the ass, man. Alpha Ben asks, are there any plans to remake uh, Trumbull Valley, uh, which was the which is the map from the original State of Decay? OG. Yeah, the, yeah, the OG map. Uh, the so the issue is, of course, I mean that map was made for a completely different engine, uh, and a completely different game than this one was. And so if we were to remake the Trumbull map, Valley map, it would need to be remade entirely from scratch. Um, and you know, making these maps takes takes a lot of time and effort. And so it would it would be a huge undertaking to try to do that. And it kind of makes you think, you know, 
like we've got we've got a bunch of really top notch artists at this company, and if I was going to have one of them, you know, like or, or all of them, you know, uh, spend a bunch of time making something. Would would we want really want them to make the same map that we've already seen before, or would we want them to put their talents to use making something that's brand new? Personally, I mean, and I don't make these decisions, but personally, I kind of would would, would rather see what new crazy terrain they can come up with, rather than necessarily uh, going back to the original. Now, if this game had been made in the same engine, using the same tools and stuff like that, and it was uh, and it was some kind of more straightforward conversion process to bring Tumble Valley over. I could see that being being kind of a, a you know a, a good cost effective uh, way to, to add to the map to the game. That sounds like a good idea, but because it would have to be remade from scratch, you know, I feel like let's ha let's have those guys you know spend spend their time making something that that is is more surprising, right? <laughs> let's see here. I'm just gonna type a couple of things that you guys can't see. And I'm gonna stare awkwardly in the camera. Click click click. <laughs> no, 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 don't go get their attention. That's a screamer. This could get noisy. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm glad the guy had your back. Sort of. He's got to have his own back at that <laughs> I need you back because you got the size. What do you want? Trekkie66, thank you so much for, for the kind words. He says that uh, that this is a great zombie game and it certainly captivated me more than the other games I currently have in my library. I lose all track of time when I'm involved in a gaming session. I guess this is one of the first games that I've worked on that, that I, where I had the same experience. You know, usually when you work on a game, you end up just, you can't enjoy it the way that other people enjoy it. It's, it you just, you know it too well and, and you've, you've played it too much when it was less fun. <laughs> you know? seen, you've seen it in all the stories. Yeah, you've seen every single part of it, and, and it gets built. But this is the first game I've ever worked on where, when I was playing it, like I would, I would have trouble stopping. Right? Like I would be like, "Well, but there's like three more things I wanted to get done before I quit, and I would keep playing." So, so it, it, it's it's cool to see other people having the same experience. That's why I like play it. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, El Captain Assassin. I'll I'll have to look into that one. Uh, I'll have to. <laughs> I next up. Okay, no, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep some notes here. So, uh, how do you use names? Okay, yeah. So, uh, Captain Assassin is asking, uh, asking, yeah, about when you're looking at your outposts on the base screen. Can we see the names of the buildings that they're in on that screen so that you know which one you're abandoning and which one you're not? If you've got similar bases, that, I mean, similar outposts that have the same icons and the same benefits and, and they're indistinguishable on that screen. That, that is something we've talked about doing and I'm not sure what the status is of that, so I'll check that out because I know it's on, it's on a list somewhere. I just don't know whose list or how urgent it is, so. And also how difficult it is. I mean, that's that's a, a big thing that will determine what, what gets to the top of the list. Partly it's urgency, like how important is the player experience? But partly is it's you know low hanging fruit you know it's something that we can do fairly quickly and get a patch out fast. Those things tend to be front loaded so that we can sort of improve the experience for people as quickly and as effectively Somebody as we can. Somebody fucking pinch me. Um, so what now that we've, we're coming towards the end of the stream, we've actually got a plan to do a quiz and a giveaway. So uh, Wonder has got uh, Wonder and Megan have got uh, a couple this? of. Uh, codes for, I believe it's for the Independence Pack DLC, guys, do I have that right? They got a couple of free codes uh, that we want to give out, and so we're going to do a quick quiz. So while Walter continues to play the game, uh, I'm going to switch over into quiz mode, and we're going to ask a question. You guys ready for a question? So we got we got folks here on, on, on Mixer who are watching us, and we've also got folks here on Twitch. Uh, and so all of you guys in the chat, uh, try to give the answer to this question. You ready? What two ammo calibers are crafted with the Magnum ammo press? I'm talking about right now, post patch 2.1, now that it's working properly. Uh, back before, it used to do 5.0 and 20 millimeter, which was wrong. That was a bug. What two calibers does it do now? So if you can get the right answer to that question, uh, you're in the running 
uh, to get uh, uh, to, to to get the prize, to get the the free uh, uh, code for the independence pack. And so, uh, so it's not necessarily the first person uh, because I know folks have you know have different amounts of lag they're dealing with uh, and stuff like that. So we don't want it to just be first come first serve. So it's, if you're one of the first like uh, you know dozen or so folks, then you're in the running. Looks like we've already got a ton of people who are throwing answers out there. Uh, there's the folks on Twitch, and then you can see Mixer is just filling up with the right answers. So we're gonna get to see who uh, who out there uh, is, is gonna win the prizes. And uh, so, so Wonder and, uh, and Megan are, are, are taking your names and, and tabulating, uh, you know, who, who the winners are going to be. And once they, once they get back to me on that, uh, we'll come back here and we will talk about the winners. In the meantime, yep. That's a let's horror. see what you're doing. Oh, okay. Looks like we're scouting. Uh, just, I was going to grab this truck from below, but this is right here, so... You know, one always of the, push your luck. <laughs> one, of the, uh, one of the best uh, perks of, of being the stream guy is that I get other people playing the game for me. Mm -hmm. So this is this is my safe game that he's playing here. So like, yes, I get to, I'm get i getting to see more yeah, of the terrain. Yeah, yeah but I mean, <laughs> you dudes are depressed. There's one thing of food left. Oh, I know. It's just this, this, hey, I've, I've got a community that's actually doing pretty well <laughs> off to the side uh, that, 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 you know, when I'm, when I'm playing on my own, uh, on my own time. So, but yeah, basically it's a different person comes in every week and plays this game. And so <laughs> this is one of those games where most of the game is actually going on in your head. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you, 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 you remember what your plans are and you know what you've got in mind and what you're capable of and just dropping into somebody's game okay. just out of the blue more to see here. You, you, you can't do that the same way right yeah i'm just I'm just trying to gather you resources <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great no that's awesome at some point i should probably go in here and try to make this game, save game make more sense uh but you know i keep i keep playing the other game instead so let's see here Oh, oh man! So Hexahash is asking, are you all considering making female stuff. versions of the special infected zombies, like the Juggernaut, the Screamer, uh, the the Bloaters, uh, the Ferals? Um, so actually, it says deals, but I'm pretty sure that, that was the word feral getting autocorrected. Uh, but anyway, so we, we have thought of that. In fact, we, we even have concept art for, for the female versions of all those characters. Um, and basically, we made we made the, the, the classic versions from from the original State of Decay were male. Um, and so and so replicating those was the first thing we did. And then we started running up against our resource constraints. And it, so it's always it's always kind of awkward when you do when you do something like that in in, in an order like that. If you you start with uh, with the male characters and then suddenly run into a constraint constraint that makes it harder for you to to add female characters because um, that, that that's that's you know you hear that excuse all the time uh, from game developers and always after a while hearing it a lot of times it starts to feel really lame and it and believe me it start it feels lame to us when we have to say it to each other we're like oh man uh, we just we just did boys didn't we um, but uh, but yeah so so it, it would definitely it would be costly for us to try to add uh, female versions of each of those uh, of each of those creatures to the game but at the same time we wanted them really badly when we first, when we first uh, started development so you know I can't make any promises but I'm, I'm glad that people are interested in that I'm glad that people care about this and, and, and want to get you know more you know female representation of the game even in the horrible vile monster category of the game like you want, wanting to, to get that stuff in there that's that, that's something that we really um, we really sympathize with and and, and, and understand uh, the desire for so uh, you know hope, maybe at some point we'll get the opportunity to and if, and if it isn't anytime soon I mean this franchise is going to keep Growing and keep expanding, and we really would, we really would like to to maximize our opportunities to to achieve, you know, representation in the game. <laughs> okay, so uh, we've got a couple of winners now. So just in case you guys missed the giant scroll that went up the screen uh, on the uh, on the chat, uh, the correct answer, of course, was 357 and 44. Uh, those are the two calibers uh, that uh, that are available for the Magnum, Magnum Ammo Press. Uh, and so we've got some winners um, over on uh, Twitch. The winner is Han Solo Dolo, uh, who's been one of our one of our long term uh, guys here on name. on the stream. So we're really glad to see that. I suspect Han Solo Dolo might already have the Independence Pack, but you know he's 
he's also uh, he's a he's a streamer and he makes YouTube videos. I'm sure he'll find some use for that code uh, that he, that he can put it to. Um, and then over on Mixer, Casio uh, is the winner. So uh, Megan and Wonder are going to get in contact with Hansel Lodolo and Casio and uh, figure out you know the best way to to deliver their prizes. But congratulations and thanks also to everybody else who got the right answer and uh, and and didn't you know didn't luck out with the random roll. Um, but you know c congratulations to to all you guys and you know. Uh, I'm I'm very pleased that you guys are paying so much attention, both to the game and to the stream, uh, to 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 know what the what those calibers were. So we've only got like four minutes left. So if there's any last minute questions or anything that people want to talk about, uh, you know, we're all ears. Otherwise, is it Cassio like old school Cassio? Uh, it's spelled with a K. So oh, okay. so yeah. So I think I'm probably even saying or maybe it's Casio or something. You know, really fancy like that. I'm not sure. But yeah, so just just so folks uh, you know understand, like the reason we didn't go with just the very first person who answered the question was mostly just because we know people are dealing with different amounts of internet lag and stuff like that. We didn't want to give you know an advantage to whoever happened to have the fastest connection or or, or or whatever. We wanted it to be a little bit more egalitarian, and so we figured that the first dozen or so people basically all answered at the same time, uh, and so we were just gonna do, we decided to do a random cho choice between them rather than just going with the first one and, and sort of uh, prejudicing our our. our um, our, our giveaways in favor of whoever just happens to have the best best hardware connected to their house. Oh, uh, Challenger for Gaming wants to know what program we use to stream to Twitch. Uh, so we're using uh, XSplit uh, right now, which is and, and basically the reason we're using XSplit is because that's what um, Chap, who who used to run the, uh, the the streams we did for Moonrise back in the day, that's what he was using, and I learned how to stream from him, uh, and so I just used the software that he was using and uh, got my own copy of it, my own license for it, and and that's what we've been doing ever since. Um, I've heard that OBS is also really good. In fact, I'm pretty sure that that's what um, Nicole, our former uh, community manager, used to use uh, to to run her streams that she would do. Um, and so, and so, I've heard that both of them are very good. But yeah, I've, I've, I've been, I've been, I've gotten very used to XSplit, and I, I really like the way it works, and, and I'm very familiar with it. And oftentimes, though, I mean, just being fam familiar with software is a lot of what makes it work for you. It's not, it's less about the, the, the features of the software itself, and just more about how comfortable you are with it. And so, I'm super comfortable with, with XSplit, and, and so that's, that's kind of where I, where I feel like I belong. Oh, we're still getting questions about whether there's gonna be a, a, a sorting feature for the inventory because as you can see man trying to find the right gun <laughs> on that screen is really rough we understand that so that's that's definitely something that that, that we've got um, in the hopper a, a fix that we want to make or an improvement we want to make to the game is, is to um, is to make the inventory a little bit more sortable so uh, you know keep your eye out for that in the future I don't have any specific details on it but keep your eye out for it that is something that's high on our priority list <laughs> so Stone Kraken ninety eight says, "Can we make a radio command where Brant comes down like Thanos and snaps, <laughs> and the zombies in a two mile radius all explode? Well, they shouldn't explode. They should, you know, gently drift away like leaves in the wind." Uh, but that sounds amazing. Uh, and uh, as far as you know, like, yeah, I'll just say that sounds amazing. That sounds awesome. Uh, I think it might be kind of unbalancing. Is the is the only order. issue that I would raise with that. Once every four weeks, real yeah. time. And I'm not sure, honestly. Like I, I don't know what kind of contract Brant signed when he joined the company. I don't know if we have his likeness rights. That might actually be expensive. We might have to pay him a lot of money to actually bring his face, you know, into the game. If he decide, if he, you know, if he's if he's sort of playing hardball. I know that, you know, I mean, technically you could have anyone come out of the sky and kill all the zombies, but it wouldn't be the same if it wasn't Brant. So that puts him in a really good negotiating position. So I'm not, I'm not really sure if we want to, to give Brant that kind of power. <laughs> he has soft power. <laughs> so, okay, it looks like it's 2 o'clock, so uh, we're probably going to head out of here, but thank you guys so much for being here, and thank you for keeping my people alive, except for the one I instructed you to kill. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I didn't really have a choice on that one. <laughs> exactly. But uh, yeah, I think I think I think you're leaving this base definitely better than you found it. Uh, you need food hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you I got I got to okay. I clearly have to spend some time with this community uh, try <laughs> try to get it back up to snuff uh, before cuz the folks out there in the chat, they're pretty much pro level players of the game. They they know when 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 uh, a community's going to crap. So I sh I need to up my game to to keep from disappointing them. But in the meantime, thank you so much to Walt, for Walter for being here. I'm really glad to have you on the team. So 
hopefully, once you've had time to, to really sink your teeth into this game, we'll be able to bring you back to talk about stuff you've, you've made and, <laughs> and, 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 and built for us. So. I look forward to it. Um, so, with that, uh, I'm Jeffrey Card. This is Walter Williams. And uh, we'll, just, we'll just say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> See you later.